Previously, we looked at the detailing and texturing workflow that we use to beautify our terrains in Project Pegasus. To do this, we made use of the height field tinting and height field material nodes that were created especially for Project Pegasus. And the placement of the different materials that we've assigned to the landscape using these tools is simply driven by some masks or weight maps. If we look at the end result again, we can see that it looks pretty good and holds up well from afar. But as we zoom in and get closer to the landscape, we can see that the resolution is just not there. Uh, so what we would need to do for an actual game is we would need to export the weight maps as well uh, to our game engine and use these to drive the placement of high frequency tiling detail maps, which would add detail up close when you're running around the environment. So the normal workflow here would be to just take these raw masks and export them directly to Unreal, import them as landscape weight layers, and then create a material that reads from those weight layers. The problem with this approach is that it's not very suitable for large open worlds because each individual layer requires a single weight map to drive it, a single texture is driving each layer. And the more layers that you add, the, uh, the higher the memory usage of the material gets and the more instructions that are needed to get it to uh, display. So you run into some limits pretty early uh, when working with the sort of traditional, traditional Unreal based weight map approach. So the way that we got around this inside of Project Pegasus is we used an ID map based approach instead. So what's the difference between an ID map and a weight map based approach? Well, I go into this in a bit more detail in the sort of accompanying series uh, created uh, that you can go and watch uh, where I'll detail uh, a lot of the problems, a lot more of the problems with the traditional approach uh, and sort of explain the benefits and, and actually dive deep into the technical workflow of how this ID map based approach works. But to give you a brief overview, Essentially, instead of using uh, a bunch of weight maps to drive the placement of different layers on the terrain, we actually have just a single grayscale image with sharply defined boundaries uh, between each of the uh, different layers that we want to display. And while it's a little grayscale like this, it might be a little bit hard to see, but if I just do a slightly more clear visualization, we can see that each of those grayscale values actually corresponds to the usage of a specific material on the terrain. So, this is the way that we're approaching it. And we're going to talk now in this video about how did we create uh, or how do we create these kinds of ID maps uh, for taking into Unreal. And if we just have a look at the default visualization there, we can actually see that it's, uh, it's just a basic mask inside of uh, Houdini. And if I display the height of the terrain and what's more, we can see what that looks like when applied to the terrain. So it's really just a mask, uh, but a specially designed mask uh, that we're going to create. We also have the ability to render that ID map in a manner more similar to the actual end resulting colors that we want to use. And that, that just kind of helps us with previewing sort of, is this working, you know, in a sort of macro perspective. And we have a tool that allows us to take the ID map, sort of read the ID map and then go and extract individual layers from it. So we can indeed see that we're going from masks to the ID map, but we're able to go back from the ID map to mask once again. So despite using a single texture, there isn't a massive loss in quality. Okay, so we're going to go through uh, and how we set up uh, a sort of a, a, a layer stack like this, which is responsible for creating the ID map, uh, which we can see here. And uh, we're gonna take a look at the sort of height field ID map layers node and the P height field two layers node, which is what is the sort of tool behind this, uh, this workflow. And uh, we can see that we're actually just referencing those same masks that we used inside of the texturing workflow. So there's not a huge amount of work here uh, in order to get this set up. So let's just uh, dive in to our work in progress file and let's look at what we're working with. Okay, so first of all, as we look through the stack, we can see that we haven't really thought very carefully about any of the naming here. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna go through and tidy this up and I'm gonna add in a few null nodes in key places, such as here. So once I've added this null in, I can see that this is wired into our, um, 
into our grass layer here. This is the one that's driving the placement of our grass layer. So I'm going to name this grass mask. And the reason that I'm creating a null node and naming it grass mask instead of just naming the height field mask by feature is because this allows me in the future to go in and add more height field masks if I choose to. Oh, sorry, mask by feature. I can add in more in here and I don't need to worry about renaming any of those nodes. So this is our grass mask and this is our grass lay, sort of grass color. Let's go. And you can see that every time I rename a node here, it's actually gonna cause a recook of the network. So what I'm just gonna do while we're doing this little tidy up, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to manual. And then I'm gonna go in and repeat that process everywhere else. So this here is the tint. So I'm gonna call this the grass tint ramp. I'm gonna call this the grass color ramp. I'm gonna call this grass brighten that's what it was doing after remembered I believe the next level layer here is the the sand uh, yep sand so I'm gonna call this sand color it's not really just the color actually it's also the height so I'm just gonna rename these to just that there we go grass ramp. okay sand and then sand mask this last one here we go it's getting a bit messy down here but I know that this is the cliffs here. So cliffs mask, and I'm gonna wire in all of these here, like so. Okay, and then this is cliffs, cliffs tint, bring that up there. And don't worry about stretching this out of it. You can sort of, sort of tidy it up a little. I'm gonna drag out of there and alt left click, wire these in so it's just a little bit tidier. And then this one down here is the scree or the gravel. I'm gonna call this the scree mask like so. Okay, I'm gonna call this scree and then scree tint. Finally, we have our AO mask. Okay, AO tint. And we've got our, which one is this cavity uh, mask? I'm gonna call this cavity tint and there we have our end result so I'm just gonna let this cook and look at the end um, so we can verify that nothing has actually changed and all we've done is rename some of these uh, some of these notes there we go I put it back onto mouse up it's gonna take a moment to cook but that's totally normal and there we go that took a minute but it's now finished cooking and uh, the terrain looks the same as before so now we have our main kind of coloring thread of operations tidied up a little bit. And you could tidy this up more, but the main, the main thing is that we have these nulls positioned throughout the network, which we can now reference by name using an object merge node. So if I place an object merge, drag the grass mask in there, we can now see that we've got a link between these two nodes. And if you can't see that line between them, you just need to go to view and go Dependency links show for selected nodes. See when that's on hide, which is the default setting, we don't see the link, we only see the name. If we go show for selected nodes, when we select it, we can see very clearly that those two are connected, or rather the object merge is referencing the grass mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this process for each of the nulls that I just created. The reason being that we're going to want to do some operations to create our ID map, but we don't want to make our main thread of coloring and detailing any messier. We just want to use some of the byproducts of that system. Okay, so we're going to bunch these up a little bit closer together. And we can see all of the layers that we now have available to us. We're also going to put down a null right at the start of our network. And this is unfortunately going to require yet another recook, so uh, bear with me. Okay, so um, there's our, uh, our input terrain now hooked up at the start of all of this, this new stack that we're about to create. So what we're going to do is we're gonna look for a couple of nodes. We're going to look for the uh, 
p id. This shows all of the id map related functions that we have created. So we've seen the layers to ID, we've seen the id to layer, uh, but the one that we most care about here is the layers to id. Additionally, we're going to put down the p highfield id map layers. So these layer names might be a little bit confusing, but essentially, what they are is this node, the p highfield layers to id, takes a mask or a weight map and can then uh, inject that into one of the sort of indices of our ID map or create one of the layers in our ID map. The PE height field ID map layers here is simply a kind of user-friendly utility that allows us to specify a number of layers, assign them a color, and that's gonna drive the visualization uh, as well as some of the kind of user interface elements. So let, before we get into that, let's see what happens if we just try to hook up the grass mask to the terrain and have a look at the height field layers to ID. We just get an error. And the reason we get an error is because we haven't assigned the P height field ID map layers to this node. And just to simplify this, I'm just going to call this ID map layers. There we go. So now we need to assign this to the height field layers to ID. So actually I'm going to call this grass ID or grass layer, let's go. So I need to assign the ID map layers to the grass layer. And I can just do that by dragging that onto this object slot. And we can now see that we get a visualization straight away out of the box. And we also have been told that there's four layers. There's this texture atlas layer dropdown, which is currently a little bit weird to look at. And the reason for that is because we don't actually have any names assigned to any of our layers. So we're going to assign our layers one by one grass. We're also going to go for a grass two because of that grass tint, which we're going to make use of in an interesting way, which I'll show you in a second. Sand, cliffs, and scree. So there we have our uh, one, two, three, four, five layers. And now if we look again at our height field grass layer, height field layers to ID, we can see that those layers have now been popped up in the user interface here. So by default, it is going to uh, apply to the grass layer. It's going to be injecting sort of that that mask into that slot. And then we're going to go to this mask drop down and we're going to add the incoming mask as the, the driver layer uh, of that grass layer. So now if we preview that, we can see that, uh, well, we can't see an awful lot here. And that's because our visualization mode is currently set to default. So we're going to set that to ramp or isolate. There we go. When we put it on isolate, we can see everywhere that that grass is now getting applied to the terrain. I'm going to go ahead and copy the grass layer, and I'm going to call this grass layer two. I'm going to wire that into the output of the first grass layer and wire in that second input there. And now you can see more of the terrain has gone red, and that's because right now we're still injecting it into the same layer. But if we inject it into grass two, we can now see that we're getting something different. And at this point, instead of using the isolate, we're gonna to switch to the ramp display. And it's still white. The reason for that is because all of the layers are currently set to be white. So let's go and set the first grass layer to be green, and the second grass layer to be yellow. And now we can see that we're getting both of those grass lay layers displayed, their position displayed on the landscape. And if I go to that second grass layer, I can play with the threshold value here which is going to drive uh, sort of how much that dominates or uh, sort of what amount of masking is required in order for that to be considered uh, for that to be to be to be in use. And the lower that number is, the, the more likely it is to be considered to be in use. So I think I'm just going to leave that for now on 0.5. And then I'm going to copy that once more. The benefit of copying in this workflow is that we did a little bit of pre-configuring of that first node, which is now just copied to these, these uh, subsequent nodes. So I'm going to call this one sand layer and I'm going to set that to sand and then we can go and set the color of our sand. And while we're in here actually, let's just go and set the color of all of these layers to be something a bit different. There we go. So there's quite a stark contrast between the colors for the time being. And um, you might be wondering how it knows which mask is uh, to use and the it, when we haven't actually changed the name of the mask here. And that's because we're actually just using the mask that's coming in from the second slot. There. Okay, so now we're going to do the 
cliff layer, like so, and finally our screen. Okay, and there we have uh, basically created our first ID map using the Pegasus ID map tools. And uh, at this point, I often like to spend a bit more time kind of wiggling the, uh, the colors of these layers to try to just try and get it to be so slightly more representative uh, of what the end result is going to be. Uh, so I can see how well it's, it's, it's going to work uh, when we get to the engine. Um, so I'm not going to spend too long on this here, but I'm just going to kind of wiggle it around a little bit um, in an effort to bring it a little bit closer, a little bit more representative. Okay, so the sand, I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit there. Desaturate it a bit, there we go. And then the cliffs are probably all right, but maybe we can add a bit more color to them there. And the same story with the gravel, just to make it all feel slightly more homogenous. Okay, so um, now that we've done that, uh, we've, we've essentially created our uh, height field ID map, and we can visualize a bunch of stuff here. We can go, if we set it to default, we can see just that regular kind of Houdini kind of mask representation of all of those different layers. Uh, Ramp is going to use the colors defined inside of the height field ID map layers node. And uh, isolate is going to allow us to visualize the output of a single, of the single layer that's being created. And then finally, we put these all back on Ramp, which is kind of the best display, I think, for showing the ID map. We can put down a height field or a Pegasus ID to layer at the very end. And that also allows us to just sort of scrub through those layers and uh, see them kind of converted back to just the, the individual masks. Okay, so uh, that's the ID map based workflow. And uh, next up, we'll be looking at how do we take this ID map? How do we take the uh, enhanced details of our terrain? Uh, and how do we take the um, uh, the color into Unreal and set it all up so that we get something to work with inside of there. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.